The following unofficial rebroadcast of Twit Live is brought to you by Odd TV and Cashfly. Cashfly's global network delivers your content, ensuring your website, streaming media, and downloads exceed expectations at cashfly.com. <laughs> Did you see spiked hair just go by? <laughs> no, you were good. You fooled me. <laughs> you fooled me. <laughs> that was well done, Brian Brushwood. Look at that. I'm very well. How are you, Mr. B? Oh, you lie. You're just so lying. You're such a liar. Is there more than you were here last? Yeah, I think so. No. Really? It's been a while because last time I Skyped in, I think it's been like three or four months since I was here. Like, yeah. Congra by the way, congratulations. Yeah, we're doing, uh, tonight we're doing our Scam School 100th episode celebration. Oh, fun. At the Encore Karaoke Lounge in San Francisco. Come on out and be on the show. Everybody go to the Encore Karaoke Lounge. I'll sing, uh, I'll sing Run DMC. It's tricky to rock a rhyme. <laughs> to rock a rhyme. It's That's right to on time. Rhyme. You know, Penn and Teller, that was Penn and Teller's big, uh, one of their big debuts. They were in the original Run DMC rap no. video for It's Tricky. Yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah, they were running the Monty and the oh, Run DMC funny. had to chase them out of town. Oh, that's funny. Because I'm just showing them for some reason off camera, though. I see it's not a real. It's not remote. It's supposed to be. There he is. There's the shit. Uh-oh. Hey, by the way, I was very proud of this shirt. I got this uh, from an artist in Austin. Let's see. We'll see if you get it. I don't know if you'll get Stand it. Stand up and let me there see. You go. Um, it's electrical, and oh, it's Tesla. And uh, or was it Edison killing the elephant? I don't get it. What is it? Well, it's it's like if you look, it's electrical. Tesla. Tesla has all this electricity, all this energy. Yeah. And you got Who Edison looking like a dope. Oh, that's with Edison. His one idea. Oh, I love feeding, it. He's just feeding off of. Uh, Wow, that is a geek T-shirt. I know, right? It's like that you have to know about the whole feud between Tesla and very, uh, Edison. Very geeky T-shirt, but I like it. Oh, I like Any it. Any T-shirt that requires a history lesson maybe is a bit much. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, you know what else is this? the first time I've seen since you have the digital board. Oh, you haven't uh, been here since we got the accent? Yeah, oh, it that's, has changed. that's the biggest difference. It has changed then, yeah. That's You've a got a golden change. mic. And I have a golden mic. You and Rush. Me and Rush, but I am no Rush. <laughs> I am no Lush Rimbaugh. Um... So how's NSFW going? Oh, man. You haven't killed any of your listeners yet. No, not, not yet. You tried. But nobody's died. <laughs> this is good. This is something, this is something we're, uh, we're pushing on the show. It's our new marketing slogan. That's right. That's right. No, it's fewer deaths than last year. <laughs> <laughs> no. Just kidding. Um, and no, we actually, we had a huge episode. Uh, Greg Grunberg, Matt Parkman from Heroes. I heard. That's us. so cool that you got him. You, well, you know what's funny is, at first, you know, he he said uh, he tweeted out, "I'm a fan of Brian Brush," and I was like, "Hey, that's nice that he's pretending to be a fan." <laughs> right. And then he comes on the show and he mentions Scam School. I was like, "Oh, he must have seen like a Scam School episode on YouTube." But then he starts referencing other episodes of NSFW, oh, so cool. and I was just like, "He's not lying. The guy's that's really so cool. a fan." Isn't that neat? It's always funny when that happens, right? It's not always. A, I'm sorry. It's, yeah. Is it? You want Windows open or something? No, no, we're fine. Go ahead. By the way, Leo, this is. I Chad, am secondary. You understand to. Uh, to everything else that goes on in this building, I am I am like kind of an afterthought. That's all right. It's like they'd love to move me somewhere else, That's right. so they can do they can do their. As business. soon as they get the Robo Leo eight thousand built, <laughs> yeah, it's all done. It's like I'm just you know I'm just that guy they keep in the other room, the old guy. What's his name? This is Chad Johnson. Chad, have a seat. Intern. You don't have to hide over there. Sit down. Oh, there. Look at that. Yeah, Chad Johnson. What are you about? Fifteen? Yeah, dude. That's what I was about to say. Everyone says he's a teenager. How old are you, Chad? I'm twenty. Well, that's practically 15. Yeah. Practically 15. I have, a, I have an eight, almost to be 18-year-old daughter, so, so, so 20 is out. like nothing. Everyone calls him OMG Chad because he does, uh, he's been doing uh, YouTube videos for a while. And he's oh, so you're famous. No. Yeah, no. Are you, are you <laughs> no, YouTube famous? Are you you got to be YouTube famous. No, I have, I have maybe, maybe 3,000 followers on, on YouTube. Dude, that's, that's a big deal, man. <laughs> Listen to you talk about your cat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, no, but, that like half of my followers are are, are for my cat. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> but here's you do what cat I cat videos on YouTube? No. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Are you, really? But oh yeah. Here's what I they thought was amazing. Up. Tell okay. <laughs> he has this whole theme song. Like like he's got a better theme song than I do. And uh and <laughs> 
He, oh, wait a minute. What's your YouTube channel? I gotta uh, see this. It's Crazy Dudo Seven with a K and two Z's. So it's oh, man, you kids yeah, today. Yeah, I, I tell know. you, so what's know, wrong you know, with so Q's sad. at the end? Yeah, exactly. It's so <laughs> sad that that the, the screen name you came up with in in middle school follows you're stuck you with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're stuck with it for the rest of your yeah, life, aren't like, you? Well, all my friends know it, and so I mean, when I started YouTube, it wasn't like oh, I'm gonna be so, famous. Like, so, so cr say it again, because I K R A Z Z Y K R A Z Z Y D U D E D U D E Zero seven. Oh seven. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. Crazy dude. That. Crazy dude. Crazy dude. That's a crazy dude. That's the baby. Yeah. That here he is. There you go. And that that that'll start uh, in three seconds. Yeah, exactly. So it'll play my. Which is oh, funny because I've got. Oh yeah, yeah. You I think you should be interning for him, Brian. I know, right? It's like I see that. I'm just like, how come I don't have one? Oh, OMG, <laughs> it's Chad. That's awesome. And you've been doing this for how long, Chad? Uh, about two years. I started, and in, in, in my project that I wanted to do was make a video every day for a year. And that failed miserably twice. I, I tried to do it twice, and so about two years ago. You can't so really do that. No, oh, it was difficult. Yeah. It was difficult. So, uh, That's I where guess... you give up and do the puppy cam. Yeah. Like, here's my dog. Yeah, exactly. Look you know, it's so cat. depressing because, like, Dvorak has a video on YouTube that has 1.2 million views, which is, you know, is like... It, is it the tech grouch? No, no, get ready for this. Microsoft, about three years ago, did a Barney... Uh, robotic Barney that sings. All he did is he put it in his bathroom on the ground and videotaped it doing one of its songs and put it on YouTube. It has 1.2 million views and it's like, I just want to give up. I, I just know, want to I stop. Know, it's, it's like, like, I don't, it's like what I, am I doing? I did show prep. I had audience integration. I had a it's message. so stupid. It's like, oh, please. Ball hits crotch. 8 million views. I, you know, I can understand that. This isn't even that good. <laughs> it's depressing. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna show it because nobody believes me when I say this. All right, Barney Microsoft. I'm just gonna Google Barney Microsoft Dvorak. I bet you I can find it. Yeah. First hit. Yeah. Barney Doll sings "I Love You." This is this is like the first hit. This. And that's it. Wow, one point three million views. Won't you say you love me too? I love you. And it's, I'm waiting for something to happen. You'd think a cat would wander in. Somebody kick Barney in the testicles. <laughs> Any? Yeah. Do you know what? This is, I tell you, if somebody wants to, is working on their PhD, I would love to see some kind of scientific analysis as to what is the, the, the anatomy of a hit video on YouTube. One point three. And since I since I talked about it, it's gone up a hundred thousand views. <laughs> <laughs> the frack is that all about? I don't. I just it's it baffles me. I don't understand it. And it, and it really. I'm not kidding. It's demoralizing. It's like yeah. here I am. I don't have one point three million views for everything I've done over the last three years. Yeah, but yeah, but I mean, you count yesterday though. Yesterday How put me over that. that. How yesterday. about that? And I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but apparently. You know, there's a picture of me. You've seen this. Uh, yes, yes. I got this last <laughs> ah, night. This is my favorite thing. Oh, man. Um, I, I guess I was a little more public than I realized. <laughs> um, you know, Has Apple I, called yet? Well, that's, I came in. First thing I asked when I got into the, uh, the station today, station, I'm calling this a station, when I got into the cottage today is, any calls from Apple? This is <laughs> Apple's own video. Oh, that's them oh, shooting no. you guys? Apple's <laughs> own video has a picture of me. In the audience, and I don't know if you can really tell, but I'm ho I, the way I'm, and, and see, it's gone full screen, so you can see that in fact, what I'm doing is holding up my laptop and taking a picture of the speech, and you can see that that's what's going on. In fact, Steve Jobs a couple of times looked over at me and kind of gave me the stink eye, and I realize now that's because he saw himself on the screen. I'm holding up a screen with his picture on it. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, He's like, What are you man. trying to tell me? Like, he thinks you're sending him a message or something? Yeah. Ah. So, but, that, but, but in my defense, at no point did Apple in any communication in any way at any time say you may not retransmit this. There were no this. NDA signed, were there? There's no, there's not, I signed nothing and they, and, and even had I, whether I signed something or not, had they said, I was prepared if they had said, okay, you, you, you know, you can't transmit this if not, but they didn't. Yeah. So I thought after, I was sitting there for a while and I thought, well, screw it. Yeah. So apparently I'm like the only one who did this. Which is why we had 180,000 views yesterday. Yeah. 
Because nobody else had the uh, the stupidity. The, the, yeah. the, the fortitude. The fortitude. The Next time, I'm just going to put Barney on the screen. No, but you nailed it, man. It's like, just go for it. He's like, what's he going to do? Tell you to stop? You're no, like, oh, I gave him publicity. I, I thought this was a news event. Yeah, and, they gave, and you know, they had all these cameras there anyway. I mean, I don't, I mean it's like a big deal. If I had known, I would have brought a nicer camera. I'm holding up my laptop. I mean, that's talking about pathetic. If I had known. And, you know, there's a guy sitting in front of me, um, Sam Bazo. You can't actually if I zoom out. That, that's Scott Shepard there who does yeah. a, a Mac podcast, and that's Sam right there, right? Yeah. So Sam, it, the, my video basically is the back of Sam and, and and Scott's head most of the time. That's funny. And in fact, I'll show you. I think I have some of it here. I can show you. There. This is the. This is what you're seeing from the other the other viewpoint, right? This is me. And this is what I'm broadcasting. By the way, this to me looks like the equivalent. Uh, like, did you mystery have a, th- a, a <laughs> mystery science theater? Yeah, yeah. Is what it is. <laughs> Actually, what I was thinking, I was like, was there a bubble of awkwardness? Like, you're going to see a movie and somebody's bootlegging it. It's right very next much to you. that. <laughs> it's very much that. Now, but now, did you have any idea at that moment how many viewers were watching? Or yeah, like, I was. I, really I was getting. Care. I was getting uh, text messages, and at one point, I found out there were quite a. F- there was. Uh, they told me ninety-seven thousand. I thought, oh my god. Yeah. And I'm looking next to me. There's a guy live blogging, and he's and he's got you know he's very proud. Jerk Laporte. No, he's very <laughs> proud. He's got his live blog. and says eight thousand people are watching. And I'm sure he's going. Hmm, hmm, hmm. And I didn't I didn't really say. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, dude. <laughs> By the way, but here's the funny thing is that at some point Sam Bazo, who's looking at his uh, laptop, gets an email saying, "Hey Sam, I see the back of your head on Twit." <laughs> <laughs> so he, tu- he turns around and he goes. <laughs> and, Which is, it's and, all, oh, go ahead. And towards the end of the event, he's actually writing messages on his iPod Touch and holding it up. Oh, it got, he said, "Hey, Jerry." So there's like at the bottom of this, you're gonna uh, towards the end of our Apple broadcast, you'll see he, Sam finally figures out this is his claim to fame. But that's but that's much better than. Can you imagine if he turns around? And he's just like, "Come on, Laporte, you're screwing everything up." I know you're ruining you it for be us. Such a jerk. <laughs> Why you gotta be doing that? And the, the, just shut up and enjoy the movie. Oh man. So what was it like? It was really interesting for me being on the outside because uh, I just, everyone who was there, everyone who touched it, loved the iPad. Everyone said really good things about it. Patrick Norton came away saying he wanted one, but. Everybody who was just looking at the numbers remotely. What was there? A lot of negativity, or what? Well, yeah. Well, and and you know, and uh, although I got to admit, my favorite tweet was somebody who said, "Congratulations, everyone's iPhone is now an iPad Mini." <laughs> an iPad Mini. Or for those Pano. for those light days. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, they got a bad name there, don't they? Isn't that a terrible name? Oh. I don't know, but oh, and somebody else said, uh, "Wait, let me get this straight. iPad is dumb, but iPod was a genius name because iPod's a pretty weird." No, name and in too. fact, that's that's exactly what uh, Dave Weiner said, which is, I'm he's, he hated the iPad, but he said, "I'm not going to rag on the uh, name because you know iPod was a terrible name too. How, People how, get used to names." How quick did we get over the we? Like yeah, you know, exactly. the we was no, a terrible know, name. We still pretty funny. Yeah, and we it. mocked it, but we said it a lot. Yeah, that's true. That's, you know, and maybe that's one of the things you want to build into it. It's like, hey, yeah, I want to think it's dumb, and meanwhile, they'll talk about it at the water cooler. I am very excited to announce, though, that from now on, we're going to call our shows Padcasts. Padcasts? I'm a, and, and I am a Padcaster. So, I think so you're that's, giving up on the netcast. Yeah, yeah, you know, netcasts yeah. didn't really catch on, so we're going to be Padcasts from now on. <laughs> the, uh, you, the, whole, the aesthetic of it, it's a unibody aluminum. It's, it feels solid. The that's screen is beautiful. I think that some of the negativity is based, uh, you know, a lot it's of people Jason Calacanis' fault. Yeah, blame Jason. Yeah. Because <laughs> it didn't have solar panels and three cameras. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the fingerprint reader and, uh, and that, but you know what's funny though, it's Jason did kind of solidify a lot of our hopes and dreams. Right. And then just sort of made a checklist of all the things that, that we didn't get on the you actual You can't blame product. Apple for the fact that we were crazed fanboys and talking about all the cool things it was going to do and it, then it didn't do it. Yeah, no, that's true. That's not their fault. Uh, and the truth is, and a lot of people have said in the chat room, uh, Leo, you said if it was a, just a big iPod Touch, you wouldn't be uh, so, you know, you would say it's crap. And it really is just a big, a big iPod uh, yeah, Touch. Only, only less than it because there's no camera on it. There's, uh, yeah, touch. touch doesn't have a camera. Oh, I thought they. I thought they. Remember that was the, the that was the big that was thing the that they were oh, going to okay. do, oh, and they didn't. Oh, and they okay. didn't do, and everybody. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh oh. But um, the 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 difference is when you hold it. That's that's the what difference I is when you hold it. And so yeah, if you just say it's a blown up iPod Touch. First of all, it's a much better screen. It's 132 DPI. It's a much better screen than the iPod Touch. But holding it, you get this kind of aesthetic. And you and the, the to me the whole the whole story here is. 
it's such an intuitive way to use something. And then when you turn it, it just does where you want, when you touch it. And it's such a great intuitive way to consume content. Not all content. We were right. talking earlier about it. it should be 16 by 9. I mean, it's crazy that it's not, a, that it, that it's not 720p. No flash support. That, you know, I don't have any problem with that. Well, but, uh, you know, the only thing that, that hiccups me on that is, is that when you introduce a product saying the best possible way to experience the web... And well, Jobs even got bit by that. I don't know if you could tell when you were watching the thing, but he he goes to the New York Times to show it, and there's a flash. Oh, that's out. hilarious! And all you see is the little Lego thing. That's hilarious! And oh, and he, you know, everybody in the audience laughs. That's funny. So and he didn't, you know, he didn't acknowledge. Well, here's that. what I suspect. I suspect what you're really buying is first of all the gorgeous butter user interface experience because uh, I like the Droid and looking at the Nexus One, there, it looks like there's there's nice things about it. I'm a huge Nexus One fan. But, That's but my phone. There's something about the fact that with on an iPhone, no matter what, it never drops below 20 frames per second as you slide from one thing to another. Everything and this is even moves. faster. And and this is something that nobody can tell until they get there. It's slippery. It's so fast. Right. This processor is really nice, and it does, uh, you know, it just is responsive. So it's a, it's a UI that doesn't really communicate in the, in the iPod touch form, but when you get in that bigger form with a fast processor, really you get the feeling that this is the, I'm like, it felt sci-fi. It yeah. felt like this yeah. is the next. This is what they'll be using in 2020 or 2030. Uh, yeah, it's a. It's, it's an, an A4. A4. It's an Apple it's a, processor, which is it's, it's one gigahertz. It's an ARM. It is an ARM uh, instruction set. I've been told. So here's, here's the other thing I suspect will happen. And and I weirdly, what I couldn't help but think of was, do you remember how great Steam was for games? And that you gave up physical media right. for games. This is a gaming platform. Too. Well, oh yeah, absolutely. But what I love about it is the idea that through the iTunes store, I could give up all physical media for my games, for my movies. Right. And no, I don't need to touch DVDs for books. And no matter where I am, with which device, whether I'm on my iPhone, whether I'm on my iPad, whether I'm on my, you know, my Mac Mini or whatever, that I can access all my virtual library of vir virtual goods and without needing to keep anything on me. I anymore. think that's exactly it. This is a, not a content. A lot of people said, well, I can get a netbook for two, you know, half the price and I can do all this stuff. It's not a content creation tool. Right. It's not supposed to be that complex. It it's doesn't have a card tool. reader. It's a consumption tool. And I think a lot of people are saying, well, I'm not going to spend 500 bucks for a consumption tool. But you bought an iPod and That's you right. bought an iPod Touch and you bought an iPhone. You I bought mean, an HDTV. Yeah. It's like, you know what? Uh, get, uh, shave off six inches off that TV and get yourself an iPad as well. Yeah. So I, I, I believe it's going to be a, a, a success. But you never know because it is a new category. I don't think this is an existing category. It's a new category, and you just don't know. That's that's what you want. If you want to sell the units, you need to make everyone believe it's a new category. But unfortunately, what bothered me was the visual where you had the iPhone on one side and the uh, laptop on the other side, and then clearly in the mushy middle. That's what they, that's what branding experts say. Is you, you say you want to avoid the mushy middle. It's a terrible place to be. And, right. And and in fact, that's what John Gruber was saying. Daring Fireball is well, we've got a lap. Almost all of us have a laptop and a phone. Mm -hmm. So, can you make a case for something that is neither? Right. And it, what can this do that neither of the other two could? So you're right. It's a marketing thing to say it's not half phone, half laptop. But I think it's in fact the case. That it, it's definitely not a laptop. Well, There's no question it, about if that. If you look at it objectively, and they're going to have to figure out what it is this can do that neither of the other ones can. Because looking at it objectively, I see that it does less than my iPhone, and I can't put it in my pocket. It also does less than my laptop, and right. uh, and and takes up about as much space. I'm not going to consume co content on a laptop in the same way. I guess that's that's something that I might be the wrong person to ask because uh, people uh, your age. Yeah are very comfortable consuming content on a laptop. That's all they do. They don't right. watch the TV. And multitasking. You know, I'll, I'll open Hulu, drag it up in the corner. I'll right. put Fallout 3 in a window, drag it off right. to the right-hand side, and I could do the one while glancing at the other. Right. See, I, when I read the New York Times, I read the New York Times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it may be that, in fact, this is a product for a generation that is dying out, and that this younger, the, the younger generation, this is like, well, I want a laptop. Well, I'm not sure because because with the the ebook, um, you know, thing that came out, I, this might be very attractive for someone in the college market. Oh, dude, break that monopoly! I, I mean, can't wait for that. Totally. To well, well, it books. also brings up ideas of of piracy because if ebooks are out there and a I mean, a college kid is is hey, parents, I need five hundred dollars. There's never been a books. case of a single college student getting around DNM or DRM in the history of media. You're, you're absolutely right. I should have <laughs> thought of that. I it's should've a thought perfect of that. device. Yeah. But it may well be why there isn't 
uh, a way of transferring files off easily. There isn't a way to, you know, I mean, it, they, 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 it is a little more locked down, and it may be that that's a sop to content creators who are saying, well, I don't know about this platform. It's Because they don't, you know, you've got to remember the movie industry, the record industry, uh, I'm sure publishers believe that a laptop is a piracy device. That's, right. that's what they see the PC as. So they like the idea of something that is not a PC. Right. Well, and exactly. And, you know, just as, just as like, look at what iTunes did with music. And by they the said, way, Somebody saying stop promoting the lockdown. I'm not promoting the lockdown. I'm pointing out why Apple is making a lockdown device. Right. Do, and weirdly, I, I don't think and weirdly that's a good why idea. it may end up being a good thing because the organic nature of it is the only way you get them to take that first baby step is to have it totally locked down. That's what they did with the original uh, iTunes music files. 99 cents, and then they made a freaking mint, and they discovered – Thanks to other people taking the next step, like uh, Amazon selling unlocked. Survive unlocked. Exactly. Yeah. And then finally, they're like, all right, screw it, no more DRN. And likewise, uh, I think you're going to see the same thing with movies and hopefully eventually with everything. So, so what you're saying is, here's the, here's the question. Would you prefer a locked down device that has all the movies and TV shows you want on it or an unlocked device like, say, the Nexus One that has no content on it? Uh, how, how committed are you to unlocked now? Uh, you know what's funny is that a while, it must have been a decade ago that somebody was saying, uh, this is back when... MP3s were first going everywhere, and they said, well, everyone just wants their free music. And the guy says, no, that's not free music at all, because these people are spending a lot of money right. to get their free music. What they want is the ease of getting ease. whatever they want, whenever they want it. Yeah. And that's why Steam made an honest man. I, I used to say all the high seas of video game no, you're piracy. Right. No, you're right. But now it's I haven't, I haven't pirated a game and since that, Steam came And out. you're older and you have more income. Well, yeah, but, but also it's just, it's just easier. It's like, ah, oh, I don't want to look for hours right. and troll Giga News and download the wrong thing and all that crap and, or a, a virus or, yeah exactly yeah because no. yeah, I've, I've had that i've nuked computers because i was i was doing the wrong thing yeah and so i let it anytime there's a that's a maturity right way thing. to do it i think that's a maturity thing but i also i think it's an availability thing because because it I've is had point it. of access like, I'm, I don't with want, you. I'm with you it used to be as like i don't want to drive all the way out to to eb to buy a to buy a physical piece of media and then come home and there or even get there and find out they don't have it it's like you know i'll do it yeah i'll pay the price right you know? I just so, want it now. I guess that's true for books. I oh, guess I would that's, think so. I guess that's true for books, Especially yeah. if you're about to get on, a, an, on an airplane, and yeah. it's like, hey, right now, you can, you know. Well, you, Chad, you're younger. You yeah. steal stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this is one of the things that people really worry about is that your generation is never going to buy a song. Yeah. Do you think that it's because uh, I am old and, uh, and our friend here is getting a little bit older? <laughs> And more responsible, or do you do you, and do you think you may someday get to that point, or is it that culturally your generation will just never spend money on content? No, I, I mean I believe that that my generation will. Uh, I mean at the moment, uh, I, there's other things that that I mean with my friends, there's niche music that isn't on iTunes, that's not on, and and they're even saying, well, I mean I, I have to distribute this some some way, so here's the torrent file, you know. Right. Uh, so you're saying convenience also? Convenience is, is definitely... The convenience thing. is primary. Yes. Okay, we've settled that. <laughs> yeah. We've, we've agreed now. We can close that book. We can close that book. You guys will not steal anymore yeah. as it gets easier and easier. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, how, would you buy an iPad? Uh, personally, no, but, but that's... Really? Because you're like a psycho. I you're am, crazy. I am you're crazy. Apple. But the thing is, that the 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 iPad doesn't do anything that that my Droid doesn't do. I mean, I I mean, maybe the interface is new and fancy and and buttery. It's fast. bigger. It's bigger. Yeah, that's true. Isn't bigger better? But but also, I mean, uh, for me, I mean, I'm working off of whatever Brian pays me. And, uh, <laughs> you pay your nuts. interns. That's a bad precedent, Mr. Yeah, yeah. Or hex nuts in a washer. Every there Thursday. you go. Yeah. All right. Yeah, some food every. Whatever once drops off the robot at <laughs> yeah. the end of the night, yeah. it's yours to keep, my friend. Yeah, exactly. And so and so, I mean, the uh, for for me, it's a very. I mean, the cost effectiveness of my Droid versus the iPad. I mean, that's a whole bunch of money. I, I mean. The iPad is really nothing without the content because you were saying it's a content. Content. You know? and so I don't want to buy an iPad and then pay for content as well. Right. Now, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what I would jump over immediately is if iTunes was able to score an all-you-can-eat deal on media for 30 bucks. You, it's yeah. pretty much instead of paying the cable companies, you pay iTunes, and you can watch your Mad Men. You can watch your, all the, you know, whatever cable content yeah. that you're crazy for you can get a hold of it was talking about hulu that was uh, that hulu was going to be for pay and i was like i i'd do it if if all my shows are on hulu that i already watch yep i i mean and it's and but it's, it's got to be complete. expensive it's got to be complete but it's also going to be less expensive than the cable company 
I don't. Know, I don't even care me. about that. To me, it's it's. I am just done with. I'm just done with paying for channels I never watch. Yeah. In in a, also, it's all on demand. We I like a la carte. Great. We all want a la carte, and we want yeah. on demand. We want. That's why Hulu's so good. Yeah. yeah. Right? yeah. I yeah. mean, to be honest, if if Hulu had all the programming that was on television right now, um, I would probably pay double what I'm paying in yep. cable. Just to have everything. Oh, that's interesting. Accessible. So it's not price; it's accessibility. Correct, correct. It's it's, it's accessibility because it'll be randomly at a random moment that I'll be like, right. I'll see a Twitter about yeah. something, and what I'll be if, like, well, I want What if you could put really. Boxy? Okay, here's what if you made the iPad 720p and you could put Boxy on it? Oh, dude, yeah, I'll I'll pay for that. That's a killer product. But again, the problem that's is that's a killer is, product. That's the Apple TV. I'm not going to sit down with the misses and and hold up an iPad between us. That's very much a solo content consumption device. That's a good point, too. Although the screen, that IPS screen, does allow you to kind of sit in bed with it between you and see it. Yeah. But they don't have two headphone jacks. They don't. It's for, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's for somebody's flying. You can hook it up to your solo. high-def TV. I mean. No, yeah, why, I thought that they would build that in. Or something, yeah. Um, and they may offer that as a dock uh, solution. I tell you what. I am, I am, in general, an open-source everything kind of guy. I hate closed systems, but for ease of use... Imagine this. Imagine that you subscribe to the All You Can Eat iTunes media plan, and maybe it's thirty bucks for a video, twenty bucks for All You Can Eat audio, ten bucks for All You Can Read, uh, you know, media, and it was tied to your name, your ID, and you could watch it on your iPhone while you're at the airport, about to go on uh, on an airplane. You could watch it on your computer anywhere you go. You could watch it on your high def Apple television. Your your 50 inch high def television that would or uh, you know basically Apple TV done right to where all of a sudden you just you know you now uh, just can get anything. That's the other problem is I hate I hate that everything's ownership of I hate that you have to buy TV shows on iTunes instead uh, of renting them. Yeah, yeah, because because well, I, th I think it's what it's like two dollars an episode to to buy them. Yeah, so I don't want to buy well, it. I want to watch I'd it rather, once. No, I'd rather buy it and and have it because because when I rent it, I mean it's like sure I got the enjoyment out of it, but. But then it's gone. Then you I can never. Go well, you need both. Yeah. You need both. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, and it's commercial that. free, right? That's important. That's really important. But it's it? like I'll pay. I'll pay a buck to watch any show. That would also that would also make me an honest person. I wouldn't but, look at BitTorrent right. anymore. But I'm so surprised that I mean, like, I don't want to pay a buck and then and then it's gone. Like, I, I think that seems. Ah, I it's like a it's penny. Like it's like, it's like a penny case. Case. By the way, I think that's so silly. Is that okay for your lower third? Yeah. <laughs> oh, gee, it's chat. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Really, that's awesome. That's a, we can always, anytime on NSFW, we cut to the camera of him, the whole chat room erupts with, OMG, OMG it's Chad. OMG, Chad. it's Chad. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. You're getting famous on Schwood's uh, coattails, dude. Yeah. yeah. That's, Maybe that's, it sounds like it's a drug. I'm famous on Schwood. I'm famous on Schwood, <laughs> man. So many people have ridden my coattails to fame, Brian. Welcome to the game. That's right. That's right. I'm He's sitting a, here bitter and old. I'm bitter and old, and all these people have gone to fame and fortune. On the other day, I'm watching CBS The Early Show, and look, Erica Hill's anchoring that. She used to be my newscaster on Call for Help for crying out loud. Holy cow! <sighs> but this is this is huge. So I mean, I guess yesterday was definitely the biggest biggest oh, day by an order of magnitude wow the biggest day we'd ever had before was two weeks earlier at ces and that was twenty thousand. Wow. i think we came close to two hundred thousand on this one that's and, pretty good that but it's not gonna happen best. it was it was lightning in a bottle because it was because i was the only nitwit who had a feed <laughs> of steve yeah but that's but that's how it happens is uh, what what's the old saying luck is where preparedness meets opportunity right i mean it's like you know that's you right mr tesla that's right <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So uh, no, you're right. And and uh, and what it did show us, which is something I've always thought that you know, uh, this my goal with Twit is to become the CNN for geeks. Yes. And the way you do that, the way C people watch, don't watch. But CNN is full of crap. You know, Larry King Live until something big happens. Right. And, and then, then everybody tunes in because there's a story. Right. And I think we're going to be like that, full of crap until something happens. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got the crap department that's, that's all worked my, out That's here. my model. Our yeah. Shenanigans. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the filler, <laughs> Mr. Brian hey! Brushwood. He's the uh, da -da -da -da. host of the <laughs> NSFW program. No, we love NSW and NSFW. You can help us all here. Brian brought us a new sponsor, and we're really trying to decide whether we should put that sponsor on the show oh, or not. Oh, man, you're breaking the fourth wall big time. This I, is great. I can't decide. I, I'll I, be honest. To, to be honest, I knew, I knew it would kind of be an interesting decision ourselves, and that's why I, I got a peek at the copy that other people I haven't sponsored. seen the copy yet. Well, yeah. That's what I said. Here's what I said right now. I, first of all, let me show you. And uh, if, By the way, if there are children watching, 
The following uh, is NSFW. H- hide your eyes, or hide <laughs> their rocks. eyes, especially you. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Chad. Chad. Hide your eyes, because this is the sponsor who is asked to buy time on that doesn't look bad. NSFW. Ooh. Yeah. I like, their, their, I like their new... Uh, their new product, Tiger's Wood. <laughs> um, so, well, here's what does the, the copy sound like? Well, the, the copy is it's re- apparently they're a major sponsor of of morning radio programs and, nationwide. And, and Adam Carolla. Uh, Adam Carolla is the only sponsor on Adam Carolla's podcast. Yep. And apparently, it's 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 you know it's safe for work language. It's just a not safe for work product. But uh, basically, it's like. So, what do you think, Chris? You're an adult. Would this offend you? Is this too off brand? First of all, you're watching a show called NSFW, which with kind an of, explicit tag. With but, an explicit but, tag, but but nobody we, curses on. We do. Yeah, we're not allowing you to curse, but we but we do. Uh, but you can have kids uh, uh, show their weenuses. What? No, what? no, you can't. Wait, well, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> you're not allowed to do that. Okay. Uh, what? I'm as what? Close what? As what? What? As what? 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 No, uh, no, no. I was. Uh, what happened? That was the Tourette's. Yeah, I, it, it only strikes once every few. Oh man, usually it's me making those digging those holes for myself. I'm glad. I'm glad no, to watch you instead. It's, it's called NSFW, but it does air uh, on our live stream, which you know that could be any time of the day, right. Depending on where you are in the world, so it's not like we have a late night, right? Right. Um, so that was one concern of mine. Um, the other concern is how far do we want to push the idea that this is a tech channel plus? Right. Right. I mean, you know, the truth is the shows that do the best in this channel are the most nerdy shows. The, right. the more the more nerdy we are. Uh, I mean, what are the big shows? It's Twit, Twig. Anything with Leo. No, there are shows that do well without me. But 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 the geek it's the geek shows that do well. Right. And uh, and so I love NSFW. Uh, we recently canceled this weekend fun, but that was not canceled. Hi- hiatus. 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 It's like Family Guy. You can come back any could, minute. It could. Uh, but we it, it, it was a mutual decision based on the fact that they were very busy, and and I I just don't the, the show wasn't taken off, and and I think that it's probably because it's not a tech show. Right. So and we have kind of set the standard of content that we try to make everything family safe mostly because i just want people with kids to allow their kids to watch right and the minute there there's an f-bomb on here dad says well i'm sorry tyler you can't watch that anymore yeah. and i don't want well, we and we've adjusted pretty well with the with the uh, language thing. Show. Yeah. but uh, but what's interesting what we've done so far with nsfw because remember we talked about we wanted something that appealed to the gamer crowd but wasn't necessarily about games. about gaming so That's we, exactly what we were aiming at. Right, I think and, you've done that. Uh, yes, and, and our audience is, is smaller than a Leo show, but, uh, but very, very passionate because uh, what's interesting, because we're in content creation, rather than uh, punditry or talking about news and tech events, as a result, the show seems to have a very long shelf life. There are people who discover it at episode right. eight. And, and they you want to see all the shows. Eight more see, episodes yeah. yeah, from the beginning. In fact, it's been a month since we've mentioned Ford. And yet, still yesterday, I've yeah. seen tweets saying, NSFW rules, sync my right podcast. And that's podcast. a great thing. We yeah. really like that. So, so we, what we've done right so far, we want to see our numbers grow, but we have a very passionate fan base that is starting to get evangelical. And what we're hoping to that's do great. is to increase, like we had, uh, we had Greg Grunberg from Heroes on, and it turns out that he was a fan, and we're hoping to get, we have a hit list of other celebrities, uh, Kevin Smith, who does Smodcast oh, and the great. film director. Yeah. And we're just hoping to, if we can, week over week, continue to do high quality uh, co- content that appeals to the demographic that we talked about we're hoping that we could t- continue to grow that way we're not going to name rename it to sfw are we <laughs> <laughs> well how about ssfw like sometimes <laughs> sometimes safer. Safer. so to get back this is our this is our question and something we're trying to decide uh, internally is and i i know you're part of this conversation should we accept an advertiser that advertises adult products does it uh is it a something that will turn people off to the network. B turns people off to the show. C turn and this is important turn advertisers off to the show. Right. You know, would Ford come back? I don't think they would in an environment where Adam and Eve is also being advertised. That's an interesting, very interesting. And, question. and it's my goal to have Ford on the network. I don't really care if we have Adam and Eve on the network. Right. Term, right, right. Of course. Well, let me tell you. And so, uh, so let's answer those three. Uh, I don't know if it would turn people off on the network, and that, uh, only the chat room can answer that one. Well, it seems to work for radio. I mean, radio. Is, I mean, I've I've heard these exact commercials uh, on radio, and and it doesn't. Yeah, I it's mean, morning radio, and it's kind of zoo type morning radio. I would guess. Yeah, it's usually on the. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. No, these, yeah, the yeah. ads they're, are, they're not, are not explicit. Sponsor. They're yeah. not. They're not explicit ads. No, yeah. What do they say? No, it's like it's like taboo lingerie or something. Like, yeah, it's big like, deal. You, you know? want to get something for your. Yeah, it's like it's like uh, Valentine's yeah. is coming up. Get that special something to spice up your relationship. Yeah. Buy one product, get three DVDs, and yes. so. See, I don't really. I don't mind that content. What happens then if the uh, person goes to this site and goes, "Oh my God, it's adult"? I don't think that's. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be a problem. So let's assume and. Uh, is it going to, so looking at the, some people say it's fine for NSFW, it cheapens twit. I don't see a problem if it's tame. Um, don't sell porn. I'm an adult and I do not like them, even though on late night TV it makes me uncomfortable. Um, the ads match the show. It's fine. You know, they say it's fine for NSFW, and that's certainly um, true, well, but that, it isn't just an NSFW in the sense that it, it's on our twit live stream. Well, that was one of the things. You wouldn't stop tuning in. Now, that's one of the things I actually wanted to bring up with, with you as well is because uh, with uh, it's very interesting, the parallel with NSFW to what we did with Scam School. Uh, when Scam School joined Revision 3, most of Revision 3 stuff was, was reviews and tech news. You, know, you had mm-hmm. Dignation, you had mm-hmm. Totally Rad Show. A lot of it was tied to what, what was coming out that week to week. And then what Scam School came in to do was something different in that it was content creation. It was a series of lessons on how to either commit crime or be the party at the bar. And we've had a number of sponsors who came in saying, what can you do? For example, Coors Light was a sponsor. And they said, they said, what can you do for us? You know, we want to promote our cold activated cans of Coors Light. So I was able to put together proposals where we actually did a trick uh, where I would blow on a Coors Light cap. That would, and the cap would frost over, so it tied in with their cold messaging, and then you would actually get a big visual of it, Go in addition to an ad in the middle of it. And I could totally see, I would love to see, uh, especially like a video game company or something, if we wrote a five-minute bit that we did each episode. You know, well, and I have to tell you things. that there are uh, some advertisers, maybe even many advertisers, who judge you by what the ads they hear on the, on the, on the thing. And if they hear that kind of ads, it's... it's it it lowers the uh, market value of the it's show. So, it's sort of a it's man. It's a, a bird in the hand or, or or the two in the bush because it's like obviously you want <laughs> <Careful>. a bigger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold on. I, I didn't know what is this. How come? How come? I'm not the dirty one here. <laughs> but it's one of those things. It's like I agree. It's like you you, you want the you want the big the big whales and you want to make sure that you don't do anything I, that's I, gonna. I want to create an environment on Twit that is. Um, and this is one thing we've done all along, and, and, it's, and it's a little brave of, uh, uh, it was brave of us early on. We turned down a lot of advertising that was, I thought, inappropriate. Yeah. And um, for various reasons, we've never been offered adult advertising, but for other reasons, I always. Until, until now. Until now. Until now. <laughs> I, always, I always wanted to do the advertising. Uh, first of all, we always said we're not going to take cheap ads. So we turned away, for the first year, we turned away all ads because we couldn't get the CPMs we, we wanted. Right. Um, that paid off because we got those CPMs. We got those high ad rates after a while. So, so, and and part of the reason is again, you have a very hyper dedicated fan base that that responds when when they do when something does make the cut, people respond and they buy, and that's why you can afford the higher CPMs. Right. And again, that's what in a microcosm, that's what we're trying to do with NSFW, because in many ways, the the people who are most passionate about NSFW are not necessarily the same audience that are the most passionate about like this week in Google, for example. You know, well, we, we tend and, to skew young. And, and that, that, can, that also concerns me in general. I mean, that's a, a larger decision that I have to make about what kinds of shows we have on Twit Live. This is another problem and for another day probably, but Twit Live, the thought was always, well, Twit Live can be a bigger, uh, uh, a bigger tent than the podcasts. The podcast will be, you know, obsessively geeky but we could put stuff on twit live and workshop stuff on twit live that isn't so geeky that's why we did ros rose we do munchcast this week in fun uh, nsfw to see where we could push the envelope uh it doesn't necessarily hurt the cnn for geeks because when there is a story the idea is well you cover the story when there is a story when there's not a story you can have larry king live. of course of course um, but at the same time, you know, so positioning is really important. And, and, and uh, when you're new in, in a market, you, you want to position yourself. So it's a very, it's a big question. It's a larger question. And I, and I don't know what the answer is. I don't truthfully think that the Adam and Eve copy is offensive. Yeah, the copy itself. But again, it's like you're playing a bigger game, and it's not really just about that copy. Oh, wow, is that a new? I haven't seen that on the TriCaster. That looks cool. Cool. Well, we, awesome. Yeah, we, sometimes we like to do this. Just so people can see the chat at the same time. It's not it's the right ideal. You're looking. It looks like you're looking directly. He's I reading am. I'm the reading chat. the chat. Yeah. Not offensive. We geeks are uncomfortable about sex. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
the, the, and also, I should say that the day audience that's watching right now is probably uh, more offended than the night audience would be. But what is day and night when it's right, when it's, when it's in Australia and right, everything? Right, right. right. So I well, just, I just, I we're debating this. We haven't made a decision on this. My first reaction was absolutely not. And then I've talked some more, and then I've thought maybe they're. To be honest, they're not offering the top CPM that we would normally want. Um, so that makes it a little bit easier. But also, Brian, I want to support your show, and I want you to well, feel like you're thing. making it's money. Like, it's like, yeah, I want, I want you to be making bucks on the show. Well, then I can, sure. deal, I can. No, I'm comfortable not making money on the show. Oh, well, then forget it. Yeah, no, no sponsors <laughs> ever. <laughs> I'm completely comfortable uh, not making money on the show if down the road we can get Ford on the show. Right. Right. And, and that's, we had Ford on the show. Uh, that's a really good point. And uh, what what I'm hoping we can offer is, like I said, it's going to be a. Uh, with, without having the Leo, uh, the Leo presence and without being about up-to-the-minute news and by, like we say, week over week trying to create a, a, a passionate following and consistent product, it's something that's I'm hoping will grow organically. And I haven't seen, I haven't seen a lot of the numbers, but, you know, it's hard for me to know. Uh, it does seem like, uh, you know, I, I watch what goes on in the Twitter sphere and people... No, you're building an audience. You can tell. You and can I'm tell. patient. I don't, you know, I'm more patient than, my, than Dane and, and, and others would, <laughs> would want me to be. I'm very patient. And, um, and I know it takes a while to build an audience. And I think you're in the right, I think you're in absolutely the right track. So I'm, I believe in the show. Um, my, I guess my inclination is just not to do the adult stuff on Well, it. yeah, if you're not hurting for the money, I would actually say... Oh, we're absolutely say, not hurting Yeah, well, then if... if if you're not hurting for the money fact, and it's not important point, that we get profitable super fast, then, then right. I say, you know, let the, let the audience continue to grow and wait for the right moment. Because okay. you're going to get another one of those marquee. You're going to get another Ford that says, whatever you got, put our name on it. Right. And, 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 Unless <laughs> we're, in the, we're in, a, in the low rent, in the red light district, and then we don't really want to be there. Yeah. 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 Which is, uh, by the way, this is uh, not only is NSFW the only explicit podcast where we don't swear, it's also <laughs> now the only explicit podcast where we refuse to take pornography money. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. To me, that's, that's a selling that's, point. That's, I think we'll that's name good. it Leo's NSFW. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's a question. Would you accept like, an advertiser like Ashley Madison? Ashley Madison. Okay, so Chris is in, the, uh, is in the studio audience. He doesn't have a mic, but he says, would you accept an advertiser like Ashley Madison? What is Ashley Madison? Absolutely wow. not. Well, <laughs> I got enough like, problems. I'm not going there. What about a site that promotes child killing? Would yeah, you yeah. accept well, their money? Well, adultery is legal. <laughs> adultery is not illegal. In some countries. <laughs> yeah, right. If you're not, if you're not in uh, Dubai, yeah. Ashley Madison is a site. What is it? A uh, I never heard of this. Well, it's an agency. Limited knowledge of what I know. I mean, it's a, it's a site for married couples to have affairs. Oh my God! Look at their tagline: "Life is short. Have an affair." Wow. Whoa. <laughs> Wow, that's a heck of a photo there too. By the way, I would like to point out that there's. Huh? Well, we're almost done. We're at Maxwell House. I would like to point out that uh, Leo has already shown more uh, not safe for work content in the last twenty minutes shown. than I've ever shown on NSFW. <laughs> well, Adam and Eve is mostly adult toys, so I was just trying to. You that's a good point. Um, that's a that's actually a very interesting question. To be, to be honest, you know what I'm you know what I'm hoping for. Uh, like we said, we wanted to appeal to gamers, and and we're growing our fan base, and they're very passionate. Uh, I would really love to start talking to Electronic Arts about their upcoming that's releases. That's the place to go. And to uh, that's and the to, place to go. And again, it's like uh, because we are right, we write all of our shows. It's like you guys look. By the, at the way, news. Ashley Madison sponsors Howard Stern. That's probably how you know about it, right? Exactly. Yeah. I, I yeah. And that's the argument, by the way, that a lot of people give me is, well, Howard has Ashley Madison and Adam and Eve. Why wouldn't you? He's like, well, you're not Howard Stern. Because I'm not Howard Stern, I would, yeah. and we wouldn't want to do Howard Stern. So I think we want to take the high road with you, Mr. Brian Brush. Video games, violence. What we want your violence money, none of your sex money. Yeah. <laughs> but we, yeah. It's okay to blow away people. That's right. The murder. It's yeah, not blow up uh, dolls. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> well played, wow. sir. Yes, uh, uh, the... Real fear I have is that it, you, it, I don't want to cheapen our product and then lose the big fish because we we went for the little fish. Yeah, and I, especially because we don't, you, you you underscored the most important thing. We don't need to. Right, right. And, We're not and that is and that is the difference between you and and just about everyone else is that you're in a position where where you can afford to do that. And certainly, you know, it's like you know a year from now if the cash reserves are dwindling, then you rethink it. But uh, but you know, I suspect they won't be. Yeah. I suspect you'll continue well, to do what you're Well, that doing. was the, the brave thing I think we did early on was to take the chance that we could charge more and so forth. And 
Yeah. Brian Brushwood is uh, the host of Scam School, which is on the Fantastic Revision 3. 100 episodes. Really? When's the hundredth? This uh, tonight. We're oh, actually we're, we're having a big party tonight, and it'll be out. You'll see. Uh, you'll see the collection of a lot of drunken people singing karaoke, and uh, we're going to learn one more trick, and then uh, then we're get, we've already done the next ten episodes as well. So wow. we're plowing forward. That's great. And where's the event tonight? Now, Encore Karaoke Lounge in San Francisco. And what time? Uh, uh, I think it starts eight o'clock. Anybody watching can go. Yeah, anybody watching, anybody watching, any fan of Scam School, any fan of NSFW. By the way, you know what would be great? Uh, I'm going to Dragon Con this year, and I was thinking how great it would be to do like a live NSFW. For pretend Dragon Con is CES, and whatever resources you want to throw behind it, you can do. Awesome. We're looking for, I realize now with the success of CES, and especially with yesterday, that we really want to do more live coverage. Oh, that's Dragon great. Con's perfect. Well, and, that's, and, that's, uh, and again, like Dragon Con would be peripherally related to most of the Twit stuff, but that's right up NSFW's yeah, no, alley. Let's, that's in fact, exactly. we'll, we'll lend you Colleen and the gear, and let's do Dragon Con like we did CES. All right, that would be I awesome. I would watch that. That would be awesome. I would totally I, Tom watch Merritt's that. Tom Merritt's going to be there. Eileen will be out there. Oh, no, no. Yeah. We're doing that. Yeah. When is it? Uh, it's a uh, Labor Day weekend, so we got okay. nine months. We got time. Okay. Plan on a, plan on uh, live wall to wall coverage of Dragon Con. Done. With, Wookies, with your lightsabers, host, Brian, phasers, Brushman. you name it. That would be fantastic. Uh, oh my God! It's Chad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he so he much. is on YouTube. You go to YouTube and you'll find him. But it's easy to find because it's spelled just like it sounds. C R <laughs> no K. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Go there. Worst handle. Ever. Yeah, he had it since middle school, <laughs> which is about a year ago. Okay. Oh, oh my God. By the way, uh, I do want to give one shout out. Uh, you're talking about uh, bad handles that follow you forever. Yeah. One of our biggest fans of NSFW is a guy who's is it's T S S A O L I C T S S A L O H I C, and and I was like, what does that mean? And it, he spelled it wrong. He spelled it wrong because he was kid. twelve. T S S A H O L I C, and he spelled he it wrong. Stuck when he with it. And he still has it now. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Chad and uh, Brian, great to see you both. Thank you for coming in. Yeah, it's good to see you. Yeah. And we're going to get ready for uh, Maxwell's house right now. Apparently, so. Colleen just heard that she's going to Dragon Con. <laughs> Would you like to go to Dragon Con? I don't know yet. No. All right. All right. You know what? You don't have to go. We'll send somebody else. It's it's an, it's an option. It's only you. Dragon Con. It's you don't you don't have to go. Okay. All right. But we're going to cover it. So if you'd like to go, you can. But if not, we'll send somebody else. <laughs> she's speechless. You don't have to go, Colleen. We can find somebody else to you do that. You don't have to go to the North Pole to miss to meet uh, Santa Claus. No problem. If you don't want to go, journalist. I think Chad probably would like to go. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, you'll be there. Okay, yeah. so we'll You're send Chad Con, instead of Colleen. Big deal. Awesome. Chris, you want to go to Dragon Con? You can go, too. Yeah. All right. Done and done. We, we, we have a staff. <laughs> Colleen's going, I don't want to go. No problem. You don't have to go. You stay right here. <laughs> See how it is with my staff. I need a Chad. You know what? There needs to be a reality show about your dysfunctional twist family. So, this, this is so dysfunctional. I sit here. They go, oh, I'm sorry. Can you, can you keep it down? We're having a meeting out there. It's like, yeah, no problem. I'm sorry. Is that what that note was earlier? Huh? Keep it down. We're having a meeting. Yeah, that's what they were saying. We're that's having a meeting. They, they, oh, man. Can you stop with your I pay these people. You know how much I pay them? <laughs> well, okay, it's not that much, but. Could you stop with the show? We're trying to have a meeting out here. All right. Oh, is it too late to get a room for Dragon Con? Uh, you know what? I uh, I scammed my way into I the number one did. hotel. Literally, uh, one of the fans of the show of NSFW, uh, uh, Dodd Vickers. Uh, in fact, who I think wanted to do an interview with you on a, on a show about podcasting. I forgot to tell you about that. Well, but he, I'm, I'm uh, here. He, he used to uh, be the manager of the Waldorf Astoria. Wow. And so he knows all the code words to say. Where he calls, he's just like, hello, this is so-and-so from so-and-so hotel. Awesome. We have a VIP guest who we think would uh, you know, awesome. have a room. That's fantastic. So, so what we'll need to do is get from you contacts uh, at Dragon Con, see if we can set up a booth and all of that stuff. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. I'd really like to do that. That's a great. That's, okay. That's, well, good. that's right I, up I, our alley. I thought that would be a good match. Yeah. Right up our alley. Awesome. Thank you, Brian Brushwood. Have fun tonight at your big 100th anniversary party. Yes. Schwood.com, S-H-W-O-O-D. That's right. There is no C in Schwood. There is no C in Schwood. (laughs) Although I did register. I I got like Twitter.com, like all the misspellings of Schwood. Oh, you were smart. Yeah. That's very smart. Yeah. And uh, that's it. Thank you, Chad. Thank you so much Nice to meet you. Congratulations on a great gig. Thank you. Chris, you want to stick around for a little bit or you want to take off? Okay, we're going we're gonna to turn over the studio right now and bring in the next crowd. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Go ahead. Just, just stroll on out of here. Right, ease on guys. down. Ease on down the road. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell get out the of bricks, here. Get the bricks, Rushwood. It's, get the bricks. It's Maxwell's house time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice to hey, meet you, Chris. Hey, hey, Ray. 
Thanks for coming by, yeah, Chris. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. He's from Rhode Island. Rhode Island. He's a Rhode Island guy. He's a. Had some yeah, have some coffee with some Fox U bet in there. Or what is that? What is that chocolate uh, coffee?